You guys remember this dude right here? He's famous for this line, and he's a uh, Jehovah's Witness governing body member. We're living in the final part of the last days, undoubtedly the final part of the final part of the last days, shortly before the last day of the last days. Yeah, well, as it turns out, he has a nephew who's gay. Well, that's not strictly correct. Had is probably the, the correct word to use here. He had a nephew who was involved in the belief system just like him. Now, if you remember, Stephen Lett here is as high up as it gets in the organization. He's a governing body member. He sets policy. If Stephen Lett didn't want the organization to hate gay people anymore, all he would have to do is tell his other seven or eight now, maybe. I I'm not sure how many it is exactly. All he'd have to do is tell the other eight governing body members, Jehovah gave me guidance from above in a dream, and he told me, Stephen, we should love our gay brothers and sisters, every last one of them. We shouldn't shun them. We shouldn't hate them. We shouldn't send them away. We shouldn't disfellowship them. We shouldn't disassociate none of that. We should allow them to be full members of the organization for the rest of their lives because Jehovah loves everybody. That's all you'd have to say. That's simple. And just like that, this dude's nephew would be loved by his family and treated well. He had the power to do it. Do you want to take a guess and see if that's what he did or not? Because I'm going to tell you the whole story. The dude's name, Stephen Lett's nephew, his name was Stephen Camp, I believe. This is him on the left here, Stephen Camp. He's a Jehovah's Witness. He believed all of it to the, to the bottom of his heart. He was baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. He followed the rules and did all the steps and, and the whole nine yards. He was a true blue Jehovah's Witness, as Jehovah's Witness as it gets. Until 2020 or 2019, somewhere in that vicinity, when he decided to admit to himself and the people around him they, he couldn't handle it anymore, and he needed to be honest with everybody, including himself, that he's gay. He knew what would come along with that. Being from a Jehovah's Witness family, he knew a lot of them would probably shun him, particularly his, his uncle, who is a governing body member. Like, wow, right? But who knows, you know? Sometimes family comes above all else. So this dude decided to take the risk. This dude decided to say, you know what? I'm going to be honest with everybody, including myself, and I'm going to come out and tell them I'm gay. So what happened when he came out as gay, I hear you asking? The answer is he was shunned by literally every member of his family. Not one came over to his side, not even one, including but not limited to his uncle, who once again, had the power to flip a switch and make him accepted by his family and chose not to. A couple years leading up to the events that we're about to talk about here, his sister, this, this woman right here, decided to break the rules a little bit and get close to him again, talk to him and, and be friendly with him and everything. Something for which she could be disfellowship, by the by. She chose to anyways because she loved her brother and didn't care if he's gay or not. So she broke the rules and she hung out with him a little bit, you know, reformed the relationship a little bit until January 2020 rolled around and Stephen could not handle it anymore. He couldn't handle not having his family, couldn't handle not having his sister, and he couldn't handle the fact that his uncle could have so easily snapped his fingers and changed everything for him and specifically and intentionally chose not to. Let me tell you how close these people are, by the way. This is how close his family was to Stephen Lett, the governing body member. This woman right here, she went to visit Stephen Lett. This is years ago before Caleb and Sophia existed. Talk to him about how, you know, there's nothing, like, good for children. There's no good children's material or whatever. Her, her daughter's name is Sophia, by the way. 
And before you know it, shortly thereafter, Caleb and Sophia came out. I mean, it's kind of speculative, but they were so close. And I say they, I mean this woman right here and her brother, Stephen, who died believing that his family hated him. They were so close to Stephen Lett that they named Caleb and Sophia after their children. So January 2020, Stephen Camp himself because he can't deal with this anymore. And in the note, he said, I don't want this memorial run by Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't want Jehovah's Witnesses to have anything to do with it. I want the people in my life who were Jehovah's Witnesses to be there because that's all he knew was Jehovah's Witnesses by design. He said, I want my mom. I want my dad, my sister. You know, I want everybody there. But I don't want it to be a Jehovah's Witness affair. So this woman right here, his sister, made sure that that's exactly how it went, that his wishes were honored. The story gets worse. Let me just draw the timeline out. So this, this kid takes his own life January 2020. Needlessly, his uncle could have changed his situation and chose not to. T takes his life January 2020, and then his uncle governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, he comes out there on stage during the 2020 convention and issues a message that is uncanny in how close it relates to this situation. So you think to yourself, you, maybe he's saying something nice about Stephen, his, his nephew, right? Maybe he's giving him another opportunity, right? Listen to the message that this dude gave three months later. As a, a governing body member of Jehovah's Witnesses, three months after his nephew died, because of, you know, at least partly the decisions that he made. There will be many others who will come back who will have to abandon their former way of life. Talking about people being resurrected after Armageddon. I was thinking, as an example, a homosexual. Now, this former homosexual comes back in the resurrection. Now, that's oddly on point, isn't it? And he really thought, and he, he was taught, and he came to believe that God accepted him with that lifestyle. But now he's going to learn about Jehovah's moral standards. And he's going to learn that Jehovah will not lower his standard to accommodate us. We have to come up to Jehovah's standard. Will he change? Will he adjust? It'll be up to him. But you brothers and sisters will help such ones. Now that, my friends, that right there is f***ing disgusting. And let me give you a little bit of context into why, if you didn't already see why that's so disgusting. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that there's going to be a period of struggle, seven years, I believe, where religion is going to be banned, all religion, and Jehovah's Witnesses are going to have to hide in bunkers or whatever. And then the end will come. There is going to be Armageddon, at which point 144,000 anointed Jehovah's Witness, including Stephen Lett here, are going to be raptured to heaven, given heaven swords, sent back to earth to slay the people that they don't like. That's the idea. Or slay the people that grieved God or whatever the holy hell you want to call it. Anyway, then after that, after all the truly evil people have been killed, everybody who dies in Armageddon is dead permanently. After that, there will be some people who are allowed to be resurrected. People who God will bring back to life who did not die in Armageddon, but died before Armageddon took place, right? People who just didn't have an opportunity to learn the truth, as they call it, or people who didn't have an opportunity to do this or that or whatever, now they're going to be resurrected, and they're going to be taught about it, about Jehovah's Witnesses, by the, the, you know, the surviving people that, that made it through Armageddon. That's the belief. And when they're resurrected, they're going to be resurrected into perfect bodies. Everyone is going to have a perfect body in this, and they'll have everlasting life. That's the claim. That's the idea. That's the theology. But Stephen Lett decided to alter it a little bit, specifically for his dead gay nephew. He decided that being gay is one of those 
ailment, quote unquote, that's going to stick with you, whether you're resurrected into a perfect body or not. This is your test. I don't care. You can't escape this by yourself. That's basically what he's saying. You're going to have to face this down one way or another. And if you choose not to change your way of life and be straight, then Jehovah is just going to reject you and you're going to die anyway. So there's no point in you even being resurrected. That's basically what Stephen Lett is saying. Now, again, he sets the, what do you call it? Like the doctrine, the theology for Jehovah's Witnesses. So every single one of Stephen Camp's family members were here listening to this when he said it. How do you think they felt hearing Stephen Lett talk about their brother that way, their son, their nephew, their cousin? How do you think they felt hearing Stephen Lett talk about this? He says he changed doctrine. I, I'm dead serious. This dude had the ability to change doctrine, and he did. Did he change doctrine to make it a more accepting religion? accept gay people more readily? No. He changed it to be less accepting. What's going through this guy's head? But you brothers and sisters will help such ones to enjoy life eternal. All must learn to walk in Jehovah's righteous ways and willingly choose to do so. But now what if someone refuses to make the necessary changes? So what if my nephew... Stephen Camp, who himself, decides, I don't want to change. I am who I am. And you should have accepted me for who I am. And any God who would hate me for creating me the way that he did can go f himself. What if he says that? Well, the Watchtower commented on that. It said after... Which Stephen wrote, of course. Stephen Lett wrote the Watchtower, or at least signed off on it, approved it. Why are you quoting the Watchtower, Stephen, when it's really your own words? What a bizarre thing to do. That'd be like me writing a book and saying, well, you know, my book commented on that. I, that's me. I commented on it. What the hell are you talking about? Watchtower commented on that. It said, after being given ample time, maybe even a hundred years, to seek God, some will show that they refuse to practice righteousness. Justly, they will lose life in the new world. As we can see from Isaiah 65, verse 12, which says, And the sinner will be cursed, even though he is a hundred years of age. Okay, so what Stephen Lett did just now, it, it may have been changing doctrine. It may have been reinforcing doctrine that hasn't been talked about in like 50 years. I don't know. Maybe this doctrine has existed for a long time. I know that Stephen Lett believes that babies are like demons, basically. And that's something that he talked about, you know, forever ago, but hasn't talked about since up until very, very, very recently. And he kind of made that like part of his belief system again and, and spread it through the governing body. Now, if we think about it, we're not born as friends of God because we're born as sinful offspring of Adam. Actually, if you think about it, we're born as enemies of God. Sometimes you'll hear people say of a little baby, look at that little angel. But more accurate would be to say, look at that little enemy of God. These people are psychotic and need mental help for real, okay? <laughs> My God. Anyways, this one was from uh, 2022 or late, late June 2022 is when this, this clip came out. The point is, sometimes they pull doctrine out of some dusty book somewhere to back up their already held beliefs, and they hammer it home, and they lay into it, and they use it as an excuse to hate other people. Now, this dude just lost a nephew to the policies that he could change, that he has the power to change tomorrow. He lost a nephew to that, and what did he do? Blamed the nephew. That's what he did. He blamed the nephew for it. Now, as I said, all of his family members, every one of this kid's family members, Stephen Camp, I think he's 20 years old when he lost his life. Every one of them was Jehovah's Witness and rejected him for being gay. 
you know, his sister here, they were as close as brother and sister get. And eventually she reestablished a relationship with him before he checked out. She had him come over to her house and play with little Sophia and stuff like that. And after he died, she led the effort against the organization, pointed out all the absolutely disgusting stuff that the organization did. So I wanted to just watch a little bit of her video, just a little bit. It's a longer one. Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. I am making this video for any Jehovah's Witness, our family of Jehovah's Witnesses that have been affected or that are currently dealing with shunning um, through disfellowshipping because someone in their family is gay. This story that I'm telling is about my brother, Stephen. This is the two of them together, to my knowledge, Stephen on the left and her on the right. How f***ing whacked out is this? Seriously. How whacked out is this? Stephen, Stephen and I were from embassy, raised one of Chova's witnesses. We, it was our whole life. One of our family members is Stephen Lett. He is one of um, Jehovah's Witnesses governing body members. This has been verified by the by. They were related, they were connected. We have pictures of Stephen Camp, the gay kid, and Stephen Lett in the same, you know, in the same photo together at her reception, like wedding reception or whatever, so. They were most definitely related. They were most definitely, you know, nephew and uncle. Um, this is all very true, 100% verified. Stephen got baptized when he was about 18. A few years after he was baptized, he came out. Now, anyone that is one of Chova's witnesses know that do you hear what she's saying there? One of Jehovah's Witnesses? Anyone who's one of Jehovah's Witnesses? It's very specific, and it's instructed by the organization. I, you're not a Jehovah's Witness. You are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. The reason is because you are one of the witnesses to the acts of God or whatever. If you call yourself a Jehovah's Witness, then it's denigrating your role in the plan, basically. Now, to my knowledge... Her coming out and, you know, calling out Stephen Lett this way burned every bridge between her and her family and Jehovah's Witnesses entirely. She has no place in Jehovah's Witnesses anymore. In fact, she's probably disfellowshipped, if I had to guess. I don't know. I have no idea what happened to her. But I don't know why she's still referring to herself as one of Jehovah's Witnesses like that. I mean, that type of language gets in you deep. Anyone that is one of Chova's witnesses know that when you're gay, that is an unacceptable life and um, rejected by Jehovah. So this was a very difficult thing for Stephen. There's Stephen. Even to have to deal with. So much so that he had this choice to make. He had a choice to either live true to himself. Which is the correct choice every time. Live true to yourself. We get one spin around this rock, okay? Live true to yourself. Don't let anybody, anybody, control who you are or what you do or what you believe or what you think or any of it. You do what you think is best for yourself every time to himself and be who he was or live a lie and stay one of Chova's witnesses. So what was the choice that Stephen made? His choice was to live true to himself, which is the correct choice. Unfortunately, along with that choice came the forced expectation that Stephen's family was going to cut him off completely. I know there are a lot of people here who 
may not have uh, uh, you know experienced this before, but when you lose everybody you ever knew or loved permanently, it is a life altering experience. It's something that I cannot describe. It's a level of pain that a human being should not have to experience. And not only was Stephen struggling with who he was and the built-in homophobia that came with being a Jehovah's Witness in the first place, but he was struggling with the fact that he knew if he lived true to himself, which is the correct choice, he's going to lose everybody permanently. That's a hard decision for anybody. And state one of Jehovah's Witnesses. The two options come with great consequences. You know, if he lives his life as who he is, then he is going to be disfellowshipped and thus shunned. By the way, in all of the pictures that you can see he has a beard or even a five o'clock shadow or, or anything at all, that is after he left the religion. And the reason that I know that is because if he had that stuff while he was inside the religion, that would have been enough to like excommunicate him, basically. So anytime you see a picture of him like this right here, it's after he came out as gay and decided to be who he was and live his life. He built a whole life right here. This is another one right here. He built a whole life outside of Jehovah's Witnesses, which... Trust me, I can tell you from personal experience, isn't easy. Over the course of years, he did it. But losing everybody that he cared about since childhood was too much for him. Let me tell you a little story. I grew up Jehovah's Witness, of course, if you didn't catch on to that already. When I was about eight years old, my dad got in a car accident and wrecked his back permanently. We had He couldn't work anymore, really. His business started failing, going under. We moved to West Virginia, away from Connecticut. We had no money when we got there. None. I didn't even have enough money for a backpack for school. And the local congregation, you know what they did? The, the local Jehovah's Witnesses, they bought me a backpack. And crayons and notebooks and pens and pencils and staplers and everything I needed. They bought me all the school supplies that I needed these people did, that I had effectively just met or, or had known for about six months. I would know these people for the rest of my life, basically. All the way until 18, 19, 20 years old, I would know these people. I get this fellowship at 18 for some stupid thing, going to a high school party, having a girlfriend, I don't know. It was a combination of things, ultimately, including smoking a cigarette. But anyways, I get this fellowship at 18, and these people who cared for me, who loved me, who spent their hard-earned money on me, a an eight-year-old boy who had nothing in life, nothing, they turned around and walked away from me. That is how easy it is to do. The moment somebody does something they're not supposed to do, in my case, smoke a cigarette or have a worldly girlfriend, or go to a party, whatever. Be gay, as Stephen here was. The moment you do something that is outside the box that they have built for everybody, it's over. You're done. You lose everybody you ever knew or loved. All of those people who cared for you growing up, who brought you food, who bought you a backpack when you didn't have it, Anything, when you didn't have a backpack to take to school the next day, who bought you tennis shoes because you didn't have any, bought you clothes, who employed your family, who rented a house to them, those people cut you off like you're garbage the moment that they find out that you are not living exactly the way that they want you to live. Now, Stephen Camp found that out the hard way. He knew that's what was coming. And he discovered that pain, the same pain that I've felt, the same pain that 
countless other people have felt losing everybody in your life permanently. He discovered it. It's something you cannot understand until you're there, until you know it. And it was too much for him. He couldn't deal with it anymore. And he pulled the trigger. I just want to draw the picture for you as clearly as I can. Exactly what he was going through up to the moment that he lost his life. And then what his uncle had to say about him afterward. Did his uncle say, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we love our gay brothers and sisters. They're still good people. Did he say, we should accept everybody into the fold no matter what? Did he say, we're done with shunning? It's a destructive policy. All of which he could have said, by the way. He didn't say any of that. He said, as an example, a homosexual. Now, this former homosexual comes back in the resurrection. And he really thought, and he, he was taught, and he came to believe that God accepted him with that lifestyle. But now he's going to learn about Jehovah's moral standards. He said, Stephen's going to be resurrected as a gay person, and he's going to have to face that struggle to be straight anyways. That checking out isn't going to stop Jehovah's expectation of him to be straight. That's what Stephen Lett said in response to his nephew taking his own life. Now, some people tell me the governing body members are simply misguided, misled, misunderstood people. Like, really, they're good people at heart, you know? They just found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, down the wrong path or whatever. No. The decision that Stephen Lett just made when he had a choice to make a different one, shows me exactly what he prioritizes. And it's the same thing my mom prioritizes. He prioritizes the religion over family every time, just like my mom. So on Stephen's behalf, I'm, I haven't seen his note. I understand he left a note. But from what I've picked up, from what his sister said about the note, I'm going to convey to Stephen Lett what Stephen Camp, his nephew, would have wanted conveyed to him. Go fuck yourself, Stephen Lett. I will spend the rest of my career doing everything I can to destroy your influence on the people around you.